This is Salerno, Italy. It is located in the southern part of the country. While technically not one of the towns of the Amalfi Coast, I will call this place Amalfi Coast adjacent. It is definitely worth consideration from visitors to the region. I was guilty of thinking that this city wouldn't stand up well to the rest of the towns along the coast. I was wrong. Salerno has its own appeal, its own charm, and its own beauty. Let's take some time to have a look. Initially, my thought was that Salerno was just a port city, one that handled a good deal of freight and served as a hub for ferries as tourists made their way to other places. There are those elements, but there is plenty for visitors to see and do in the city as well. Salerno is home to around 130,000 people. The old town, which is just a short distance from the water, is as charming and gorgeous as any. It is easy to find narrow streets and alleys to explore, which could honestly take up the better part of a day. I'm going to run through all of the things I discovered. The main pedestrian street through Old Town is Corso Vittorio Emanuele. This avenue stretches for many blocks and seems to be quite busy no matter the time of day. It is lined with stores and restaurants. You can either be a part of the parade or find a seat and watch as the movement plays out in front of you. There is plenty to like about this car-free zone. For a different type of walking experience, head over toward the water. The Lungomare Trieste is situated there. It is essentially a one and a half kilometer long route filled with trees and boasting additional vegetation and benches. All along the length, there is a magnificent view of the Tyrrhenian Sea. It is pretty spectacular. There are three separate paths that allows you to choose whether you want to be right on the seafront or here in the shade. The corridor is about 30 meters wide it was created through the first half of the 20th century. In the 1950s, some described it as the most beautiful seafront in the Mediterranean. I was enamored by the striking scenes that I found all through the old town. This spot is Piazza Gioia Flavio. It has been one of the primary squares of the city for centuries. Today, many people call it the Rotunda because of the buildings which surround the space. The main feature here is the Fountain of the Dolphin. This appears to have been here forever, but it was actually created and put into place in 1997. Piazza Sedili del Campo does contain a historic fountain. It is called the Fountain of the Fish, and in addition to fish, features the heads of two river deities. This dates to the early part of the 17th century. Another square that I enjoyed was Piazza San Francisco di Assisi. This was not as claustrophobic as the others with more of a park-like feel. The centerpiece held my attention for several minutes. I tried to figure out the meaning of the carvings on the stone panels. The artistic vibe in the old town was dominant. I fell in love with this set of stairs. Street art and poetry enhanced four levels. The words came from Alfonso Gotti, one of Italy's most important 20th century poets. Images designed to augment the verse were added by a Salerno street artist. Those stairs might be an extension of this. You are looking at a project called the Author's Walls. Again, at least some of the poetry was penned by Alfonso Gotti. This is the neighborhood where he grew up. Now, many of his words are on the walls, supplemented by the visions added by street artists. This project sprouted in 2014 as a way to revive and regenerate the historic core of Salerno. It is described as an open-air museum. Look at this work. This is on a street called Via Musuccio Salernitano. The walls here are packed with color and meaning. I just happened upon this street by chance and I'm so happy that I did. There are probably 10 to 12 very large murals right in this one area. Many of these pieces were created in 2010 to honor a street artist who was run over while painting on a building. They still look vibrant today because of a restoration project that took place a couple of years ago. There were other examples of street art through the city. I found these images in one spot that had a sort of pastel look to them. 
Roam around Salerno's Old Town for any length of time and you'll come across some incredible artistry. One of, if not the biggest single tourist attraction in the city is the Cathedral. Technically, the name is the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Angels, St. Matthew, and St. Gregory VII. Purportedly, the remains of Matthew the Apostle are in the crypt. I've read that some consider this the most beautiful medieval church in Italy. Construction first took place here in the 11th century, with major remodeling done in the 18th century. I did not venture inside the cathedral, but I was completely taken by the exterior courtyard. Moving between the columns and beneath the arches was a special experience. If I am not mistaken, these are bronze doors that were cast in the 11th century in Constantinople. A 12th century bell tower looms over the cathedral and the courtyard. So much history in one spot. There are numerous other historic churches in Salerno. This is the Church of the Crucifix, which dates to the 13th century. It stands on a nice little square inside the historic center. This religious center is today wedged in between other structures. The Church of St. Peter in Chains was established here late in the 16th century. That artwork over the entrance depicts St. Peter being liberated from prison. This is the view inside the place of worship. The location for this is Piazza Porta Nova. One more for you. This is the Church of St. Mary of the Announcement. It was erected early in the 17th century. There are remnants of the system which was built in the 9th century to supply water to Salerno. Quite a bit remains of the medieval aqueduct. Someone described the arches of the aqueduct as graceful, and I think that is an appropriate description. A portion of this is called the Devil's Bridge, as legend has it that it was built in one night with the help of demons. Part of that lore is that passing under the arches at dusk or dawn would lead to an encounter with evil spirits. I did not have the chance to test whether or not that was true. This is a museum dedicated to what is said to be the world's first medical school. It was founded here in the 9th century and enjoyed quite a long run over almost a thousand years. The school closed in 1861. Supposedly, people came from all over the world, both with the desire to learn medicine and in the hope of being cured. This place is touted as a virtual museum. I did not go inside to check it out. Possibly the best green space in the city is here. This is Villa Kaminali. It was designed to be the garden of the city, created in 1870 as the entrance to Salerno. Today, it is a peaceful space full of nature, statues, and more. This is the Tullio Fountain, created in 1790. It originally sat on the waterfront, but was eventually moved to this location. If you need a break while in the city, come here. There is another garden which is said to be quite attractive. Situated up the hill in the middle of the old town, Minerva's garden was closed when I visited. Even outside of the walled attraction, however, there were indications of the beauty within. I heard that the site was closed even before coming, but I ventured up anyway, just in case that information was wrong. The trip was facilitated by an elevator that saved quite a few steps. Even though the garden was not open, ascending still came with benefits. This is where I got the best look at Salerno from up high. I would say that the views are worth the small effort to get to this point, whether Minerva's garden is open or not. Back down closer to sea level, I was attracted to this building. It is Teatro Verdi, named after the composer. I did not go inside, but I thought the exterior was striking. Construction here began in 1863, and the inauguration was held nine years later. Today, it hosts a variety of performance types. One of the new elements in the city is here. This is Liberty Square. It is a massive plaza with a mixed-use crescent-shaped building. The complex redeveloped and extended a portion of the waterfront. It was completed just in 2021. Salerno is an important transportation hub for southern Italy and the Amalfi Coast. There are several companies which offer ferry services. This is the main tourist port. 
On the first day that I visited, though, high winds churning the water meant that all operations were canceled. This should serve as a lesson for me and anybody else who is planning on taking a ferry to one of the other towns along the coast. Be flexible. There are taxis and there are buses. Buses are cheap but crowded. Taxis can be very expensive, so ferries are the best option. Later, during my stay in the region, I was able to take ferries numerous times. I always enjoyed the trip, and there were some spectacular moments visually in the Salerno Harbor. Outside of the harbor, this is Piazza Concordia. The focal point is this statue. It's dedicated to the Immaculate Conception and St. Matthew. The main train station in the city is a short walk from the ferry port. This is quite the busy terminal. There are 10 tracks, and the station sees all sorts of activity, from intercity to high-speed national traffic. This has been the main station in Salerno since 1866. This was a busy single day for shooting, but there eventually was time for a short break. It came at Cafe Cavour. The barista there took great care in crafting my cappuccino. It took a while to get to the cappuccino today. I arrived on the bus and immediately started wandering around the town. At this point, it's actually afternoon. Still tastes pretty good. There is certainly no shortage of places to stop for coffee in Salerno. The same could be said for virtually all of Italy. I also made time for something to eat in the middle of the day. One of the specials at Cafe della Rece had eggplant as its main ingredient. I took a chance. I have never been a big eggplant fan, but I'm liking this a lot. That combined with the relatively small portion size and the cost of only six euros makes this just about the perfect lunch. This was a good spot to have lunch, outside with plenty of activity along the avenue that sits right in front. After a full day, I also took a moment to grab a beer at this cafe that is just around the corner from the train station. Always a good way to cap off the afternoon. I hope you enjoyed that brief look at Salerno. I was a bit surprised at the number of tourists who were exploring the city at the same time as me. There was a lot of English being spoken as I moved from place to place. In addition to checking out the city, you might want to consider using Salerno as your base for discovering all of the Amalfi Coast. I'll have plenty more from this part of southern Italy. You can see it all right here on Old, Alone, and Far From Home.